So it was in Harrisburg, PA. It's only like an hour and a half away or an hour, 15 minutes. So I was like, I'm just going to drive it. I'm not going to stay in PA for especially when I could just go home to my own bed. So the convention luckily didn't start till 11. So I didn't have to leave until like nine, which gave me a good amount of time to sleep and do all that wonderful stuff. Since I got to sleep, I was well charged and organized. I had my books. I had 11 by 14 prints. And I also had five by seven prints. So I upped my print game <laughs> and um, I was ready to go. But then I got up there and I didn't have my tape. I didn't have um, my scissors or anything like that. My toolbox was not set up properly. So I was missing a lot of little things that would help me do stuff. I got up there. I was late because as you know, I'm always late, but I know how to set up my stuff to the point where I can get my stuff set up in a matter of like minutes, to be quite honest. I just put up one thing of my crates. You see those crates over there? Those uh, wire frames. I put up like a tower for that. I hang some pictures on that. And then I lay my books out. I lay my mystery boxes out. And then I use the rest of the table to scatter my prints on so people can see the prints. And that way I filled up the table. I did buy a tablecloth. So I'm starting to get a little more professional because I never seem to buy a tablecloth. And um, I always get stuck with this crappy ass wooden, wooden looking table. I get there and I don't know where it is. So I just park and I start walking around the mall. And eventually I find it in the back and it says like a big old sign, Harrisburg Comic and Popcon. And I like parked all the way around on the other side of the dang on building. I went back to my car then drove my car around to that side. And then that's why I was 10 or 15 minutes late. So everything was good. I noticed there was a lack of people. Um, I'm thinking people are still just coming out of COVID and they're coming out of their shell. So they're finally coming out to see um, more comic cons and all that stuff. Um, I get got a couple of pictures, which was nice. But then I noticed it was hot. It was hot. And I'm like, why is it so damn hot in this place? They have no air conditioning. And it turns out they didn't have air conditioning. Like, um, apparently in the whole mall, the um, AC went up. People were kind of like, they're there, but then they would kind of just circle around and then get the hell out of there because it was, it was, it was, it was hot. But it was cool. I met some new people. I talked to my neighbors a lot. Um, that's what I like to do. I like to ramble and run, um, meet the new people around me, meet you guys and all that stuff. Masks were optional, but they had hand sanitizer all over the place. I, at my table, I always have hand sanitizer. I mean, it was kind of easy to social distance because like it wasn't like, usually I'm used to crowds of like 30, 35, and it was like nowhere near that. <laughs> it was nowhere near that. Um, so, I mean, it was easy to social distance. Well, I saw a lot of uh, Demon Slayer costumes. There was a lot of M Mimichu, my hero. Demon Slayer and my hero. That was like the dominant cosplay, which was good. But then, like, there were a lot of um, cool ones. Like, we had some Star Wars ones that were really cool. Horror characters like uh, Jason and Michael Myers. So Saturday was okay. It kind of just blew by because it was like, it was just so hot. And like people were just like, let me get in and out. They wanted to come and see what they wanted to see. And then they kind of wanted to get the hell out of there. Sunday was a little better. They were told that if you brought your own fan from home, they would not charge you for electric, which is really good. It was a great convention for people like to meet people and talk to people and stuff like that, get to know people. But they had a lot of problems here. So first of all, the AC was broke in the whole mall, not just we're in a boss, an old Boscoff's, I think. 
store, department store. So not just in that little department store, but the whole mall's AC was down. And then the free internet from Verizon was down. So, <laughs> so a lot of people's sales got affected because they couldn't connect to the internet to um, take electronic payments. Except for me, and I should I guess I should have told more people just to tether your phone, like that'd been smart. Um, but I just tethered my phone to everything. So I had the internet and I was able to make sales just fine. Um, now I will say it took a while because the way the area is, it like cuts off a lot of signals. So I had to keep stopping and restarting my uh, tethering on my phone in order to finally get payments to go through. But I got payments to go through. A lot more people actually showed up Sunday. A lot of people came up to the table and all right, here's what I, okay. I love talking to people. Don't get me wrong. That being said, if you're going to ask me questions about the art and you're going to stand there for like a half hour and talk to me about the art, just buy something, <laughs> just buy something. So that was the convention. That's basically what it is. The heating and the internet was down. But overall, I got to talk to a lot of people. I didn't get to like walk around the convention and I'm noticing like I need, I need like a girlfriend. <laughs> like you have no idea how having someone there that knows your stuff and you can walk around and explore like that's, that's awesome. But that was the convention. The convention was really nice. I definitely will do it next year. The worst thing that happened was coming home. So here's what happened. I thought I could make it from there back to my place without stopping for gas. Wrong. Wrong. So I'm driving back and the gas light comes on and it says I have 30 miles before I'm on empty. So okay, I'll just pull off at any, any exit. And obviously there's a gas station there, right? Wrong. Of course I picked the exit that's in bumfuck and it's nothing but woods and country all over the place. Um, and I'm looking at my GPS. I'm like, where's the nearest gas station? 45 minutes away. So I'm driving through all this like backcountry roads, trees and stuff, and the sun's going down. I'm trying to beat the sun and get to a dang on um, gas station before it gets pitch black out there. And I'm freaking out. I am freaking out. I'm like, please, please let this car make it to a gas station. Please don't let me be stuck out here in the middle of nowhere. I am not trying to get axed off. I'm driving, I'm driving, I'm driving, I'm driving. And like, all of a sudden, I've never seen this before out of my car. I've never seen this. I guess I was really low. So it went, all of a sudden it was like, you have, I was down to maybe like 25, 25 miles to go before you get to an E. It didn't say that, but like, that's what it read on the dashboard. Then out of nowhere, it just clicked off. It wasn't showing me any numbers any mile numbers or anything it just clicked off so i know i'm going to run out of gas but i have no idea how long until i run out of gas and i'm still in the middle of the bum fuck and the sun is going down and it's getting lower and lower and i'm like oh my god i'm going to be stuck out here it might have it might have because it made it we rolled in the 7-eleven and i i fill that bad boy up and I kissed it. I kissed it on this little hood and I said, I will never do this to you again. So I, I got there, I got there and then I got the hell out of Dodge, made home at like 7.30 and then came home and watched the Ravens game and fell asleep on my floor because I was dead tired. <laughs>